Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, we're continuing our learning glass lectures on physics. Um, I'd like to talk to you about a, an idea in physics that is very important, very prevalent, and this is this idea of energy. So let me ask you guys first what you think about that word. So John, I am going to pick on you first. What do you think about when you hear that word energy? I think about potential energy that I've, I've taken physics before and okay. kinetic energy. But potential energy, kinetic energy. How they can change from one to the next. Okay. So when you start talking about words like this, you might think, you know, what does it relate to in, in my everyday sort of life? And typically we use this word in regards to ourselves. I have a lot of energy today or I'm drained of energy. So if I say that, if I, if I say I have a lot of energy, what does that mean to you? Um, that you're feeling upbeat maybe. Okay. Maybe you're having a good day, feeling ambitious. Okay. Good spirit. Ready to go, ready to do things, ready to move, right? If I have a lot of energy, I'm ready to go do things. I'm ready to get myself moving. And so this idea of movement is intimately entwined with this idea of energy. Where would I get the energy? If I say I've got a lot of energy today, where did I get that energy from? Um, you probably had a big breakfast. Had um, food, right? Yeah. I have food. Maybe I have coffee that has caffeine in it and it constricts my blood vessels and that changes my awareness and my energy level. Where does the food come from? comes from <clears throat> plants and cornfields and a variety of different things from the earth. Okay. It has energy in it. If I eat it, I can take advantage of that energy, right? It has chemical potential energy in it. And when I eat it, I can release that energy and get myself moving. And you said it came from the fields, from the farms, right? Where did it get its energy from if it was, you know, a corn cob growing in the fields? Where did it get its energy from? Um, well, it had to grow, so it had to get some sunlight, some water, mm -hmm. planted in some good soil, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Okay. Sunlight, absolutely. Had to get water from the ground, had to get nutrients from the ground, but it also had to get carbon from the air, right? Plants take in carbon dioxide and turn it into polymer structures, carbon structures within them, okay? And this is all energy capture. So the idea with energy is just that. You're gonna move energy from one location to another. It came from the sun, it went to the plants, the plants grew up, it went to me, I ate the plants, I have energy, I go run a race, and now I've expended that energy, okay? And when I expend that energy, it goes somewhere else. It goes into heat, it goes into friction, it goes into thermal energy. And so energy, is, it's really interesting because energy can never be created or destroyed. Okay, energy can never be created or destroyed. It's just there. It is there in our universe. There is some finite amount of energy in the universe, and that's it. And all we do is move it from here to there. Okay, we are just transferring that energy. The sun is powered by nuclear fusion, right? That fusion creates a lot of heat and light. The light comes to the earth. It gives energy to the plants. The plants grow up. We can eat the plants, we get energy, and we're just moving it all around the universe. And so it's sort of an interesting idea that you're never gonna create energy, you're never gonna destroy it, you're only gonna move it around, okay? The energy in the universe is a constant number, and it's finite. Okay, so what can we say about the different forms of energy? Well, John mentioned one, which is kinetic energy. 
and kinetic energy is due to movement. If an object has a mass and it has a velocity, there's movement associated with it, that thing has kinetic energy. So when I eat the food and I go run, I'm expending kinetic energy, one half mv squared, as we're going to learn. But there's also potential energy. And we call it potential energy because it has the ability to make things move, such as gravity or springs. Okay, those are all forms of potential energy. If I compress a spring, there is potential energy in it. Namely, if I let it go, it's going to spring back. It's going to send things moving. Gravity, we know, if I take an object and I drop it, gravity has potential to get that thing moving. And so we say there is potential energy. There is also thermal energy. When stuff in the universe is bouncing around, atoms and molecules, that's what we call heat. And how fast they move is determined by the temperature. Okay? And so anything, anytime atoms and molecules bounce around very quickly, that's more energy in it, more thermal energy, the higher the temperature. All right, let's take these now and put them into some mathematical terms. So the first one we talked about was kinetic energy. We're going to write kinetic energy with a capital K. And we said it's related to movement. And this is what it is defined as. And we're going to see in the next section how you can prove this, how you can derive it. But this is just a definition that we're going to give you at this point. It's 1 half the mass times the speed squared of the object. Okay. And now, one thing you notice about this equation right off the bat is it goes like the speed squared. So if I double my speed, my kinetic energy goes up by a factor of 4. All right. If I triple it, it goes up by a factor of 9. All right. So it is quadratic in the speed. But the other thing you notice is that this is a scalar quantity. I don't have any vector sign on the left. I don't have any vector sign on the right. Energy is a scalar quantity. All energy is a scalar quantity, not just kinetic energy. Okay? It's a number. And the units are joules. So let's take a look at this, right? We have kinetic energy. On the right, we have units of kilogram, and then V is meters per second, but we're going to square it. And so this is what a joule is. One joule is equal to one kilogram meter squared per second squared. And that's the units of energy, the SI units of energy that we're going to use in this class, joules. OK, so that's kinetic energy. What about potential energy? Well, potential energy comes in a few different forms. One of them is gravity. And gravity, potential energy, is mgh. The higher you go above the surface of the Earth, the more potential energy you have. If I lift this pen higher and higher, it has more potential energy, meaning if I drop it, it's going to be going faster when it comes back down the higher I start from. Okay? But we also have springs. We'll write those with a U sub S. And this is 1 half Kx squared. K is the spring constant. So it is determined by the size of the spring. X is how far you compress it or stretch it from its equilibrium length. So this one is also quadratic in this variable X. If I stretch it twice as far, I put four times the amount of 
energy into its potential energy. Okay, those are some definitions, and we can now think about what happens in different situations, and we're going to take advantage of these definitions.